Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to hot, trendy Miami, but ends up in a place that's stuck in the past. It's almost antique. It was once the best family restaurant in town. You couldn't get in here on a Friday or Saturday night. But all that is left from the glory days is their all pink decor and a menu that features food from Denmark. Very Danish food today, huh? Which is being prepared by a Cuban chef. Bam! Ah! And eaten by a shrinking clientele. How's the situation? Oh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. That is on life support. You can't worry just about what the old farts think. Tonight, in one of the biggest challenges that Gordon has ever faced. We just contaminated the whole fucking place! He attempts to change an owner who hasn't changed a thing. Why is he so blasé? A lot of people are afraid of change until they're brought down to their knees. And somehow return Fleming to its original glory before it goes up in smoke. Watch out, watch out, watch out. My grand could do better. And she's dead. Holy shit. Tell the chef I surrender. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. God bless Denmark. Miami, Florida, known for its beautiful people, sandy beaches, and Latin-inspired culture. An ideal place for a Danish restaurant? What is traditional Danish food? Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. Andy and his wife, Suzanne, purchased the successful restaurant, Fleming, a taste of Denmark, eight years ago. We knew it was a good restaurant. We knew it was very popular. And the whole idea for us was to try and keep it as much the same as possible so there would be little change other than someone else greeting them at the front door. Hi, welcome to Fleming's. How are you? We were worried about the fact that it said Fleming, a taste of Denmark. Neither one of us know much about Scandinavian food. It doesn't have celery in it, does it? We struggled to try and find a chef to come in. Very knowledgeable. In Danish cuisine, we finally found something we like. Is a classically trained chef. But it's Danish food today, huh? I'm from Cuba. In the menu right now, it's not 100% my cuisine. Give me flavor on the food. Flavor. I prefer something like when you right away you eat your food, you, you feel it. What is that? Bam! Oh, you're going to have to start learning how to speak Danish. I have this chef who's got lots of ideas. You know, let's change this, let's change that. But I've been very reluctant because I, you know, I don't want to alienate our regular loyal customers. Follow me, ladies? Yes. Our clientele that comes to the restaurant are old people. All the servers, they read the obituaries to see if our customers are listed on there. After a while, it's pretty sad when you see them sort of knocking down like dominoes. So I haven't been here for a while because of health situations. Oh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. And it's just sad to know these are the only people that we've served to. Keeps going like it's been going. This is what we got. 15 years ago, you couldn't get in here on a Friday or Saturday night because it was booked. Now we don't even have reservations to fill our Friday and Saturday night. I think we have to change something. We'll talk about it later. Andy has been afraid to make changes, and why, you know, when I tell Andy, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, and he says, that's not going to fly. But you can't worry just about what the old farts think that come into your restaurant. You got to get in the younger people and the middle-aged people that are going to be your clients for the next 10 years. It's a 31 dinner. The huge amount of debt that we're under right now, it, it puts a strain on the restaurant, it puts a strain on the relationship I have with, with employees, it, it puts a strain on my relationship at home with Suzanne. This business sucks. I know. We can't have many more Saturday nights like this, or we're not going to stay in business. Our restaurant and our home mortgage are tied into one loan. I'm concerned about losing our house. This has been one of the most stressful years of my life. We're at a point where we need this restaurant to be successful soon, or, or we're going to be in, in big trouble. People immigrate to America to chase the great American dream. They come from Sicily to open the most amazing Italian restaurants, from Shanghai to open their Chinese restaurants. This is the first time I've ever been to a Danish restaurant. Can't wait to meet the Danish immigrants. Thank goodness I brought my dictionary. 
see you. Welcome to Fleming. Gordon, please, and your first name is? Suzanne. Suzanne, and? I'm Andy. Andy, good to see you. You're the owners? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Vorden Erdu. I'm sorry. <laughs> no Danish here. <laughs> but it's a Danish restaurant. The Danes have left the building. So, the chef's Danish? No. No, he's Chef Cuban. Is Cuban. Cuban. And the name Fleming's, what it means? Fleming is, was the original owner of the restaurant. It's and Danish. He is Danish. So, I'm trying to get my head around this. Danish name, what's Danish in the restaurant? There's still some influence in oh. the food. And we kept everything almost identical. Ooh, what's going on with the color? Somebody colorblind? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, actually, I am. But you are? Yeah. Well, you look very well coordinated in terms Thank of you. dress, I get, eh? I get a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, where should I sit? I'll take you in. What are they there? Those are our desserts, and we put them out every day. Why would you put them out before the customer orders them? So they can choose. So you finish your entree, and then you parade up here to the gallery. Uh-huh. <laughs> This is antiquated, this idea. This Seems... was the way Fleming did it. It's been kept this way. Seriously? Does that look appetizing? Adjacent to the bathroom door? They all have to walk by it at some point during the evening. Trust me, if I was on my way to the bathroom and I had to bypass that, I'd be discouraged to come back and order dessert. I better sit down. Aye, aye, aye. Dessert museum. Maybe when he tastes them, things will be better. Good evening, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm fine. I'm Julie. I'll be your servant. Excellent. This is the crudité we serve with every meal. Well, I'm the crudité since uh, <laughs> my granddad's 80th birthday. So old-fashioned. And how long have you been here? I've been here 15 years. Mm. So you were with the old owners? Yes, I was. Wow. What's changed here in 15 years? The staff. Wow. My God. <laughs> and did the original restaurant Fleming have pink? Honestly, pink flowers, pink napkins, pink walls. It's pink everywhere. Yeah. Oh, good grief. The pink walls and the little blue plates, to me, it's almost antique. It's like walking into Grandma's house. Or oh, say goodbye to Grandma. <laughs> I think I'm ready, actually. Let's start off with the uh, Gravelax. OK. Got to see that. Fricadella. Certainly. Entree. I'll go for the Grandfather Duck and Danoise. OK. Excellent. Thank you, Lion. One grab black, one freak appetizer. You tell me what you know really about the food from Denmark? I don't know too much. For me, it's not very excited. I prefer something like it. when you put your food in your mouth, you have pot in your mouth. Here's your grab blocks. Wow. Take me around the plates. Um, it's just some garnish, and then you have the uh, grab blocks. Thank you, Lion. Wow. It tastes like flypaper. Oh, Jesus. There's a nice fly on the side of my plate as well. What a shame. That tasted very strange. Way overdone. And unfortunately, the fly, he's dead now, anyway. OK. Mm. Oh, my god. He absolutely hated this, and there was a bug on there. Garbage. <sighs> One free appetizer. And this is our homemade fricadellas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Frick Adela. Jesus. It's just soft and mushy. Does the chef ever season food? Everything's just got this air of blandness. It's just like mush. It just disintegrates. That's our customers. <laughs> Unbelievable. That must be a lot easier on the dentures. Yes. <laughs> Dave, how's everything so far? Dreadful. This is special for you. There's a swan just appeared on that lady's table over there. What is that? Cindy does that. What is that for, Cindy? Oh, uh, she has a tiramisu in it. Can I just have a little look at that? Can we have a good look? This is from the old days. Oh, my goodness me. That is extraordinary, though. I'm going to order dessert just to get the swan. <laughs> huh? How cool is that? Enjoy. It's amazing. It reminds me of my sixth birthday party with my family. You must show me how to do that. Okay. Oh, yes. 
I like to make my swans and take them to the people and see their reaction. <laughs> just take a big piece of foil, just fold it over. Uh -huh. enough room to have a nice big tail. We love a big tail. <laughs> More elegant, yes. like you, glamorous. Oh, bless you. Twist it around. I love it. Make him a pretty little head. It's just about it. Wow. Oh, and the kids love it. Ta-da! <laughs> this is special for you, here. Thank you very much. My children will love it. Thank you very much. Safe trip. Thank you. Excellent. And you just made that day. But if this doesn't work out, I'll certainly go to work for <laughs> Chef Ramsay. I'll make all the swans. This is the dust. Right. My goodness me. When was that cooked? Just now. Really? It looks like it was roasted a couple of days ago. Thank you. Not even moist. <sighs> Jesus, just when you think it couldn't get any worse. I don't think that Grandpoppy wanted duck cooked like that. That's definitely one fuck duck. Right now, I don't even think a swan would cheer me up. Oh, God. He didn't like it. Tell the chef I surrender. <laughs> no more, please. <laughs> God bless Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. We're done. Son of a bitch. What a disaster. Where's the chef? That way. Straight behind the line. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. And you're the head chef here? Yes, sir. Why is everything so bland? That's some of the worst food I've ever eaten. The Gravelax, why is it so tough? I don't have an answer for that. It's like eating a leather belt. Frikadella, mushy. The duck was dry, overcooked. That was shocking. Honestly, the food is so outdated. Why do you let him cook that food? Because we haven't tried to change the menu. We've won. We just haven't tried to change anything. Just been afraid to change. My God. You're nostalgic with something that's not worked for a long time. You are at the end of the line. <sighs> Canal. Coming up, something's rotten in Denmark. It's a dinner service from hell. Dinner's ready. Everything that is sent out of the kitchen I'm not gonna eat that. comes right back in the kitchen. What didn't he like about this? You just said he hated it. Oh, it's a non-stop parade of food being returned to the kitchen, you know that? Yes. And there's a shocking discovery oh, oh my God. that threatens to shut down the restaurant. Stop! Oh, God. And later, it's the most drastic relaunch yet. Can Chef Ramsay light a fire under this reluctant owner? My grand could do better, and she's dead! Or is Andy and the restaurant just impossible to say? Good evening. How are you? Good. Word of Chef Ramsay's arrival has filled the restaurant with customers for the first time in five years. And so tonight, the entire Fleming staff, owners, waiters, and cooks, will be tested. Follow me, please. I am disappointed at some of the things that happened today. How's everything going out here? Good. I just need to start sitting this room now. OK. But there's nowhere to go but up now. And I trust Andy 100%. And I hope to God I'm right. <laughs> because if I'm not, we're shit out of luck. My name is Julie. I'll be your server this evening. Gentlemen, have you decided? I really don't know. Something Danish, obviously. The grandfather duck. Right, I'm going to have the wiener system, please. Working in beer for wine, Danish chicken, and wiener. I need Cindy, please. Just 30 minutes into service, and a number of entrees have left the kitchen. Perfection. That's what you got. Dinner's ready. So clearly, speed is not a problem at Fleming. They're pretty awful. However, satisfying customers is. How is everything? This isn't so good. Huh? This isn't so good. I'm not going to eat that. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's wrong with that? Wiener Sissel, she said it was very bland. Let's put it this way, we won't be coming back. 
While Andy tries to pacify unhappy diners, I can make something like uh, coconut shrimp very quickly, crab cakes. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the kitchen in action. He's heard the complaints about the food and knows that many of the problems are not caused by cooking alone. Holy mackerel. Ay, 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 ay. But by what is lurking in the storage unit. What the fuck? Oh, mashed potatoes, piping hot. This is unbelievable. Andy, Suzanne, come in here. Oh, God. Orlando, I know you're busy there, big boy. I just need you for 30 seconds, please. Yeah, I'll be quick. Come with me. So this is for raw meats, yes? And here we've got some... What the fuck is that? Oh, my God. No, come on. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. There was one duck on a tray with meat that was thawing, and the duck was in the meat juice. Cooked duck and defrosting meat. Look at it there. So who put the ducks there, then? Ah, oh, fuck. We've been selling duck. Stop the kitchen, everybody! I need all the ducks off the table and stop them eating it. Probably. They have discontinued the duck. No, just for the seasoning. No, no duck. Like table 61 had duck. Is that the duck? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'll explain in two seconds. Do excuse me. It was embarrassing to have Chef Ramsay literally take the duck from in front of the gentleman and okay. tell everybody no duck. Oh, have you served anybody duck? I've served about eight. Stop! We're not serving another fucking duck out of there. We just contaminated the whole fucking place. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Raw meat now and cooked meat. No, come on. A frightening discovery in the storage unit. Stop. We're not serving another fucking duck out of there. We just contaminated the whole place. Has clearly shown Chef Ramsay just how far this once legendary restaurant has fallen. Now, I am seriously, seriously worried. We're fucked. Yeah, you're right, you're fucked. If I was a health inspector now, what would you do? You would take that product and probably throw it out. Throw it out? You would continue serving one more plate of food. What do you think we're going to do? Continue cooking? I don't believe that the food that's out here now is contaminated in any you way. Don't I never have seen that before. If I did, I would have a fit. But I was surprised that Andy wasn't aware of that. I think he's had his head buried in the sand for the last seven years. You cook one more thing, I'm fucking out of it. There are blinders at times. When things get tough, I put them on and I just forge ahead and you miss some things and you miss some of those. Chef Ramsay is frustrated by Andy's laid back attitude. So he decides to try and get some answers from Andy's wife, Suzanne. I don't know where to start. OK. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, all I can say is I'm sorry. Trying to work with an owner that's in denial is 10 times harder. Why is he so blasé? I think he's probably in shock. I don't know. I'm not him, so I don't know what he's doing right now. Suzanne, if your husband doesn't start realizing what he's doing wrong in a big way, I can't help it. I agree. I agree. I feel let down by Andy. This is a huge, huge 
wake-up call. And if this doesn't make any change, nothing will. I don't know where to start, Suzanne. What I do know is that right now, I don't feel too good about this one. change in the weather and that's exactly what Fleming's needs a big dramatic change so I'm gonna hit the streets and find out what the locals really want from their Fleming's restaurant hello how are you good to see you guys now ladies have you heard of Fleming's yeah, yeah. Of nobody talks about it anymore nobody says oh I was at Fleming's let's go back and try it out there's a new owner and it went downhill have you heard of Fleming's restaurant actually I have what's the word on the street not so good food my parents used to go there back in the day when it was Good, but I didn't even know it was still open. Uh, I haven't heard any good reviews. It's old. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a place my mom and dad would probably love to go. And, and you're not going to go anywhere near the place again? Not until something's done. It's extraordinary. And this guy's at first at change, but you got all those customers standing on your doorstep. Unbelievable. So sad. Chef Ramsay's grassroots research clearly points out how damaged this restaurant's reputation really is. Okay. Ironically, many of the people who work at Fleming realize they are in desperate need of change. But there is one person who doesn't agree with that. Unfortunately, it's the owner. Yesterday was a really bad day. I took the morning this morning, walked around the community, done my homework, and really confirmed this Danish restaurant is no longer talk of the town. So what I need from each and every one of you is to be incredibly honest. Let's talk about what's wrong with the restaurants. Orlando, tell Andy what this place needs. Uh, I believe we need to build in new menu, we need to build in new food, something more attractive, something more contemporary, you know? That's my opinion right now. Crystal, tell Andy why the restaurant's not working. You're scared you're gonna fail. So instead of taking the jump and the leap of actually doing what you want to do, you're scared that no one's going to like it and you're going to lose everything. But the truth of the matter is, Andy, either way, you're going to lose it if you don't do something. Suzanne, you and I spent time talking last night. You were pissed off. Tell your husband what he needs to do to get this place back on track. In my opinion, I think a lot of people are afraid of change and they don't change until they're brought down to their knees because they're terrified because it's easier to stay with what they know than to risk change. And I think that has been Andy's fault. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah, I, I, her points are valid. My, How do you respond to it? How? My, my response to it now is I'm just afraid to alienate the people that we had and lose what we have. The only thing right now that's going to save your business is a dramatic change. It, it's a long time coming, and it's, it's time to do it. Andy needs to take ownership of the restaurant. And I think Andy will buck up now and take charge. Get ready for a dramatic change. Coming up, Gordon does what he can to spread the word about the new Fleming. Step on it, big boy. It's about the standards, yes? But he may have been better off keeping it a secret. Forget anything to do with Danish. Danish food may be a thing of the past. He's making Caesars with vegetables. He's what? But some of the old problems still remain. It's a relaunch night teetering on disaster. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Water, water, water. Holy shit. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> Chef Ramsay knows that the changes to Fleming cannot be subtle. And the most drastic change needs to be the food. So step one of his plan is to take the restrictions off the kitchen and let them cook. I want to spend the next 20 minutes looking at the ingredients, what we've got, and just cooking something. And when you start, forget anything to do with Danish. People don't go out in South Florida to dine Danish. Let's get that right, yeah? Good. Think popular, think trend, and think where we are. OK. Let's do some cooking. Four of us together, yes? I want to see a little bit of flair. Oh, yeah, baby. That's going to be awesome, something different. Ah! That's like we're looking for. That's like we're ready for that. As soon as beautiful. Is it? Melting your mouth. Let's go. Ready? 
With the shackles taken off, the kitchen have come up with a number of exciting non-Danish menu items. That's definitely not our menu. Chef Ramsay has added a sear tuna. Now to make sure everyone is on the same page, he shares these new dishes with the front of the house staff. Scrumptious. Right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Nothing Danish there. Taste the chips. They'll be seasoned with a little bit of cayenne pepper, black Beautiful. beans, mm -hmm. pineapple salsa. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. And I love this. Seeing those dishes and tasting them, it's a better reflection of what Miami is. And I think it'll draw in a big crowd. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Well, I think change is difficult for everybody. What we've been doing for the same 25 years is not working anymore. We're going to get this restaurant on track. With Chef Ramsay's newfound belief in the kitchen staff and Andy, Gordon and his team worked through the night to pull off one of the most ambitious makeovers yet. Good morning. Good morning. Come through, please. All right. Today is about dramatic changes. Andy and Suzanne, are you ready? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Good. Let's go. It's time to enter the new Fleming. And more importantly, time to start a new profitable chapter. Holy shit. Come in. Oh, please. my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy cow. Can you believe this? Oh, my God. This is magic. We got rid of that pink that scares and spooks customers away. It was dated and uninviting. Now it's warm. It's elegant. It brings in a new modern era. I am so excited for Andy and Suzanne. It's the direction that we've been wanting to go. And now we can take those baby steps to do that, because we can't go back to being the old Flemings. This color is gorgeous. Andy, what color is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? OK. <laughs> but it looks great. <laughs> it's a Tudor brown. We've got some new art on the walls. And look at the lights. They make the brown stand out. And have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I, I can talk. This is no longer Johansson Fleming's restaurant. A wonderful new theme, Birds of Flight, taking off into new chapters, <laughs> a new beginning. I love it. I'm extremely happy. Yes. It's gorgeous. <laughs> to see Andy and Suzanne crying for happy. It, it, we haven't seen that in a long time. Nothing but grim faces, nothing but despair. And this is not despair. This is awesome. <laughs> I want to just bust. Amazing. I don't cry very often. Uh, I can't tell you the last time. But this did it. This is uh, everything for us. It gives us new hope. You OK? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm crazy. Happy for you. Thanks. I'm so happy for you. I'm blue. Just... <laughs> to see my husband cry with happiness, to me, that was the biggest gift of all. I've never seen him so happy. It's been a huge wake-up call for him. Now we have a Russian to be proud of to take us right in to the 21st century. Andy. Embrace it. Really convict it. Make it yours. It will happen. With the change in decor now complete, Chef Ramsay's next step in turning around the business is to market the restaurant to a younger clientele. So he reaches out to two local designers and puts together a swimsuit fashion show. Oh, wow. wow. The fashion show was fabulous. I was amazed. It's good to see younger faces that we want to attract to the restaurant. People are very excited. Our phones will probably be ringing off the hook. Although the main objective of the fashion show was to spread the word about the new Fleming, Chef Ramsay had a secret mission that he wanted to reveal. Weren't they amazing? Yes, yeah. absolutely. For the grand finale, please welcome our male model. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Andy, the owner of Fleming's Restaurant. I was in shock because I didn't really quite recognize him. It was more than a breath of fresh air. There's a whole hurricane. Suzanne. Yeah. Ten years younger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You look great, honey. The clothes were amazing. The haircut was amazing. Most importantly, he was smiling. How can you not be motivated? Give it up, buddy. Well done. Yes? You look great. You look good. I'm ready to go. You got to come see this new restaurant. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Something's burning. Bobby, I smell something burning. Will a dangerous fire... Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Darrell Andy's hopes for a successful relaunch. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Clear the way. Let's go. Holy shit. 
It's hours before relaunch. And with the dining room makeover and owner makeover now complete... Okay, Ryland, let's go, buddy. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil the new Fleming menu. Gone are the Danish gravel axe, the fricadelle, and the grandfather duck. And in its place, a modern contemporary menu, ideally suited for South Miami. Right, start off with the crab cakes. Yeah, a modern twist, the rock shrimp uh, lettuce cups. Pan seared, group of fillets, seasoned with chorizo, so it's a little bit spicy, playing on the Cuban influence because the chef is Cuban and more importantly, nice contrast, yeah? They look more contemporary, definitely more like a, this century, you know? Before we're not in this century, we go back to the 80s, you know? Look at the portion size. What I want to see tonight more than anything is <clears throat> empty plates because when desserts come, we're going to do this. Very, very simple. Oh, yeah. yeah. To the table. Now, yes, yes. it looks so inviting. It's modern, contemporary, and it's just an immaculate way of serving a dessert. We don't stand and hold on to nostalgia. We move on. Andy, how does it look? It looks fabulous, Chef. Uh -huh. Now, there's no excuse. Have a little taste. Sure. Yes. We're opening in just under an hour, guys, yeah? Oh. That is good. Really. That is whew, out of this world. The menu is fantastic. The food tasted out great. Everything looks wonderful. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any Danish food anywhere. Fleming has gone through some major changes in the last 72 hours. It appears as though the biggest change may have been the owner, Andy. OK, 74, 75, 77, 78. No 76, OK? Who has a newfound energy and is operating like the leader he once was. Let's go. We've got to roll. Chef Ramsay definitely put a fire under Andy. You should have everything out there. He was sent down special from heaven. I, I know he is. Tonight, relaunch night. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but stick together. We're not throwing food out. We're caring, seasoning in, and hitting perfection, OK? Yes, sir. Let's go. I'm feeling nervous, excited, tense, everything, everything all at once. Crystal, take one cook from the Miami Heat. Yeah. He's coming for dinner. OK? okay. So you look after him, yeah? Hi, welcome to Fleming's. The fashion show clearly has spread the word about Fleming. This is our new menu. I like the look. It's very clean and it's refreshing. I'm very excited. Enjoy dinner. Thanks. The restaurant is fully booked. Yes. My name's Crystal. Good You're one. Not, I know who you are. Okay, it's nice to meet you. Are you ready to order? Yeah, I'm going to get it like a house salad. Can I try the wood salad? Oh, I'm going to have the pan seared mahi mahi. Yes, ma'am. The pesto shrimp liquid, please. I'm going to bring you the sushi salad okay. right now Thank for you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. First table, yes? Two small Caesar salads. Snap on it, big boy. As part of the new menu, all of the entrees come with either a house salad, a wedge salad, or a Caesar salad. Fifteen minutes into service, and the salads are leaving the kitchen. Carrots, right to me. Richie, you gotta be quick with those Caesar Is salads. Is our Caesars coming with croutons, or are they coming with vegetables? Vegetables? He's making Caesars with vegetables. He's what? That's what I'm asking. I'm trying to say that's not a Caesar. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Is there carrots in your Caesar salad? I would think so. Yeah. Uh, would you excuse me? Would you mind if I just get a chance to do them again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm my apologies. Hey, guys. Orlando, just two seconds. You, stop. Just look at me. We're not serving Caesar salad with bits of carrot in there. The Caesar salad hasn't changed. Come on, guys. Radish, Caesar salad. The only thing's missing is the fucking flies. Nerves are high. And there's a lot of confusion back there. A lot of confusion in the salad area today. You have to watch what he's doing. Lucky's very complicated salad. You know complicated? That? What? My grand could do better. And she's dead. Oh, my god. We can't even get out of the traps properly. The cold food is backing up the kitchen, and this, right now, doesn't look good. Fucking hell. It's 40 minutes into service, and not one proper salad has left the kitchen. Marzo, can you help, please, yes? And not surprisingly, customers' patience is wearing thin. His lettuce is a crouton. You just take a bag of rummy and throw it the kitchen's totally backed up. I can't even get a Caesar salad. Caesar salad is the simplest things to do. You just put a little lettuce in, little, you know, it's like, God. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. I asked for five Caesar salads like half an hour ago. Where the fuck are they? Do I have to make it myself? I make it myself, yeah? Oh. Uh, a 
Caesar fucking salad. We're dying over here. Come on. Hallelujah, I got my Caesar. OK, here is the Caesar salad. The kitchen has recovered from the salad dilemma. Beautiful, let's get these going. And an hour into service, entrees are making their way to the dining room. And relaunch looks to be back on track. Fuck. Oh, my God. It's not working. But the old equipment at the restaurant has brought the kitchen to a standstill. Where am I trying to play? No, no, no. Try to put it on the uh, pilot. Guys, come on! Unfucking believable. If we don't have the right equipment with that kind of business, at the same time, we can't respond. G give me to me. Give me to me. All right. How can you work with a range that half of it doesn't work? Unbelievable. We can't get a fucking meal out of here. Let's go! Shit. Oh. This relaunch, we have to make it work. We don't have time to, to have another bad night, but we don't have what we need back there to, to really pull this off 100%. While Chef Ramsay goes to the dining room to see how customers are doing, the chefs continue to tinker with faulty equipment, unaware that they are about to cause a much bigger problem. Something's burning. Papi, I smell something burning. Where, where do you smell that? You smell it? Something is burning. Something is burning over here. What is burning? Bread burning? No, it's more than bread. Something else is burning. Something is burning. I smell something burning. Something is burning. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Clear it away. Clear it away. Let's go. Moving, guys. Move the pan. Move the pan. All right, all right, all right, all right. Andy. Move it, move it, move Holy it. Holy shit. Within minutes of Chef Ramsay leaving the kitchen to check on the dining room. Something is burning over here. A stovetop fire has erupted, putting the relaunch and the restaurant in danger. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. As the smell of smoke enters the dining room. Watch out, please, guys, watch out. Chef Ramsay returns to the kitchen and takes charge. If it hits the pilot lights and backfires, it's going to blow on his legs or blow on his face. Underneath, it's underneath. Watch out, watch out. Get out. Watch out, guys, please. Clear the way, clear the way. I mean, when was the last time that was clean? Right, keep working. Keep working. Chef Ramsey, we've got the fire out. Now we're trying to get reorganized and back on track. I need one lamp, medium rare, one revive, medium rare. Come on, guys. Pull together. Let's go. Despite being down to only six burners in the kitchen. Finally an order out. OK. Andy and Orlando have led a comeback. This is your veal chop, lamb chop. That's it. And Fleming has rebounded from the fire. Roasted chicken. This is outstanding. It's delicious. I like that. I don't like this one. People were extremely responsive to the new menu. They loved the items. They were socializing and, and having a good time. It was more noise than I've heard in this restaurant in 15 years. It's just refreshing to see it this way. Are you ready for dessert? The chocolate mousse. We want one of everything. <laughs> oh, very good. The dessert trolley was sensational, and everyone loved the desserts. There's nothing left behind, nothing to box, no swans. Cheers to you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Your success of your restaurant will be the best, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a good night. OK, uh, guys, come over, please. It was a tough night. It was a successful night. But the oven slowed up service. So it's going to be very difficult to produce this new menu, or any menu for that matter, with the equipment we have. Yeah, what a night. What a significant difference. Wasn't there a new energy in the dining room tonight, a sort of vibe yeah. of, yeah? People were alive. Yeah, we energized. Any one of you could have thrown in the towel and given up. And you held your own. And I, I, I believed in the passion and the fight and the determination to make this restaurant work. Thank you, sir. That was the good news. But there's a big problem here, yeah? This problem will prevent Flemings from being a success. I need you to follow me, all of you, please. I was scared and I wanted to get away because I had no idea what was going to happen. Hurry up, please. Come out. Just hurry up. Stand over there, please. Oh, dear. Tonight, I was forced to make an emergency call. And this is the result of that call. There we are. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> A state 
state of the art, brand new, tailor-made Vulcan kitchen. When that tarp came off, I just felt this whole sense of relief. This was amazing. This was the missing link. Oh, my God. What the hell? That's one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. That's too much. Wow. That's for us? Come on. We're starting off with a unique six-ring burner, a convection oven. Phenomenal. Followed by a six burner diamond cut char grill. And then finally, the most amazing fryer. I'm very fucking happy. <laughs> it's been installed tonight. Now you have no excuse. Wow. No excuse. Andy and Suzanne, you have everything you need inside that restaurant now. Low staff, great decor, great chef, great menu, and a new kitchen. Now, take it and run with it. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm just, I can't express myself well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I never in my wildest dreams imagined we would be given so much. Well done, my darling. Thank you very much. Oh, you're great. Well done. There's absolutely hope for Flemings. We are going to make Ramsey proud, and we're going to do it for ourselves, too. Well done for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> really well done. Thank you. Yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> Rest on tour, because that's what you showed. Thank you. Now do it. I will. Good luck. Thank you. Make it work. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Chef Ramsey did a lot of what was necessary to get this restaurant on track. He really found the right idea and the right design. I, I think it's going to save us. I think it's going to turn us around. Wow, what a week. Out of all the kitchen nightmares I've ever done, this has to be the biggest transformation ever. We completely changed the decor, completely changed the menu, but the biggest change of all was in the owner, Andy. Now he can make his own history as opposed to buying somebody else's. My goodness. Caesar salad with carrots. Unreal. Group hug, group hug, group hug, group hug. Hi, hi. After Chef Ramsay left, Andy and his loyal staff embraced the changes that Gordon put in place. Wow, ready to use. And with a brand new kitchen Ooh. and a new lease on life. Oh, yeah, that's the sound like they're looking for. Fleming has once again become the place to eat like it was 20 years ago. I can run a restaurant. I just needed the fire back. Your menu looks beautiful, man. Fleming's is going to be around for at least another 20 years. Hi, welcome to Fleming's. Have a seat. We'll be right there. I think we're going to be on the right track.